everybody, welcome to Capital of Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch. Rob Jarrell. And today we're going to recap this past Saturday's HBO uh, boxing telecast, which had Jesse Vargas versus Tim Bradley for the interim WBO title. Mm -hmm. uh, same title that Tim Bradley lost to Manny Pacquiao, who then lost it to Floyd Mayweather. And we just got multiple belts out there. That's right. That's how they roll. But, um,. Let's get right into the fight. Um, if you watched our preview video, we figured that um, because of Jesse Vargas' limited uh, top-level competition and the intangibles of Tim Bradley being that he does a lot of things very well, nothing too great, he would be able to take a pretty wide decision in this fight. And we got pretty much that. With a controversial ending. Except for the last 20 seconds of the fight. No, it wasn't me. It was the last, what, 12 seconds? <laughs> it, it, he, I think he got hit at 20 seconds. He, he circled around a little bit. He grabbed him. And then at 10, you know, they had to clap, clap, and all hell broke loose. Take it away, Rob. All right, so this fight we had, it, Vargas was up against it. Tim Bradley had seen a plethora of different fighters. Good fighters. And High level fighters. Yes, and he's seen one of the best in Manny Pacquiao. So experience and intangibles are on his side. He gave up height to, to Vargas. He gave up youth to Vargas. And um, that's pretty much what he gave up because if you watch Vargas' last few fights, he those fights could have gone either way. He just got the benefit of the dial in those fights. Yeah. This was not going to be a fight that he was just going to get the benefit of the doubt on because Tim Bradley, even though his fights may in, be close, he's always come out on top with the good work. And he did it in this fight. He was able to get in that wheelhouse, land some great shots on Vargas. Vargas tried to use that jab. He really didn't run, but he was fighting off the back foot. And Bradley, not known as a power puncher, uh, was constantly moving forward. That did not work well for Vargas. I don't even think that's Vargas's fight. Right. And then he had switched trainers in between. Well, like what, two, three weeks left to go toward the fight from Roy Jones Jr., who was busy. He's preparing for his own fights. He's doing commentating on HBO. He just has a busy schedule. He went to Eric Morales. I don't know if anyone else, but I've never heard about heard of Eric Morales. Mer Eric Morales training anyone especially for a championship or a pro fight i'm not saying he's not training anyone but we just haven't seen him this is his highest fight. profile client and the highest profile fight he's had that's right he's so, uh trained some fighters i think they had some fights on fox sports one where he was training some guys but yeah this was the biggest one to date and probably you know his name got him there yeah that's right um like we don't know how good of a trainer he is yet but we are talking to multiple division world champ, mm -hmm. um, a great fighter, certified Hall of Famer. It's just we don't know his trainer acumen just just yet. And right now, I really I hate to say it, I didn't really see much, even though they were talking, they showed some of the instructions, but it was to no avail. Uh, Bradley has all had all the intangibles in a show in this fight. He was tough. Um, while he has really good speed. Um, he listened in his corner, did what he was supposed to do. Uh, the only problem, and I don't know if this is Bradley trying to get more TV time, or if this is something that him and his coach are um, coming, coming from, but he seems to be going for knockouts more often and relying a little bit less on his boxing skills. This is not something that, if I was a trainer, I wouldn't do because what got him there, if it's is his toughness, his intangibles, and the fact that he does have very good boxing skills. Yeah, um, the, the reason that Rob is saying this is not the best idea is because Bradley's only throwing one punch at a time. He's not throwing the combinations like he used mm -hmm. to. Like he used to throw eight, nine punch combinations, and that, in the midst of that, could hurt a guy. Now he's loading up on one punch, swinging that overhand right from uh, Mississippi to Vegas mm -hmm. and while they are landing 
the guys are seeing him coming because he's just throwing that one punch. Sometimes he uses the jab. Um, he did hurt Vargas at one point with a left hook, and it came in combination. That's right. That's the point we're trying to make here. That's setting up those punches to end with something that could hurt or take out your opponent. If you're loading up, it gives them a chance to see what's coming. Right. You, you know, they if you miss, forward, they can block it, they move out the way. Or if you miss, you're taking a lot out of yourself. But if you right. set it up between those combinations, I mean, I'm not saying he has to throw eight, nine punch combinations, but if he can vary it up, you know, three, four, maybe five, and then end on that, you know, a hook or that overhand right, then you have a higher chance of knocking your opponent out. Exactly. Um, hopefully, he's a smart guy. His trainer's a smart guy. They're both very good. Maybe they'll start seeing that. And uh, once again, at the end of the fight, which we'll start talking about now, Bradley said, I stopped listening to my coach and it got me in trouble. His coach might be telling him these things. Like, hey man, you need to stop loading up. You need to work the combinations. But Bradley still kind of has his chip on his shoulder. He's a two-time world champ. He's gotten all, you know, he's fought the who's who, but people still aren't giving him that credit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's some of the, one of the reasons why he's fighting the way he's fighting. Like, he really wants people to, like, start talking about him like he's one of those players in the division, which he is. Yeah. yeah. End of the fight. Bradley clearly has his fighting control. I think I had it had him up eight rounds at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, that last round was kind of up for grabs. He was hustling a little more. That was another thing that kind of gave him more of a part because he was hustling more, showing effective aggression because he was landing shots. That's he right. wasn't just walking forward. He was landing shots as he was walking forward. But he gets lazy. He gets clipped. Let that be a lesson to you. Even in the 12th round, gotta be defensively sound but he gets clipped with a right hand from a light puncher in Jesse Vargas that's right he just never saw the punch coming which brings us back to the earlier uh, conversation of setting your punches up blinding them with other punches to land the hard punch they don't see it coming they get hurt mm -hmm. happened to Brad being a veteran that he is he's been down several times in his career he's been hurt several times in his career and we've seen him come back from it each and every time that's right He's surviving, he's surviving. And then we get Lucian Butte, Lebrado Andrade part two. Now, if you guys don't remember that fight, I want to say it was like 2007, 2008. Yeah. Uh, Lucian Butte was winning that fight handily. Lebrado Andrade drops him hard with like a few seconds left in the fight. And the ref kind of botches the count. And in turn, he ends up surviving. Mm -hmm. This time, the referee hears the clap of the sticks for the final 10 seconds, thinks it's the bell, and stops the fight. Jesse Vargas thinks he's won the fight, so he's celebrating. Tim Bradley's like, hey, what's going on? And uh, you can hear the ref say, I heard the bell, fight's over. Vargas still didn't hear that because he was all celebrating. Bradley's like, okay, cool. So he's walking around all cool, calm, and collected. Jesse Vargas thinks he's won by knockout. And then, you know, they have to tell him, hey, no, you didn't win by knockout. We just got to go to the scorecards. So he's thinking, oh, they robbed me of a knockout. He had nine seconds left. Anything can happen in the fight game. But I seriously don't think it was going to happen. Yeah. Um, if anyone who knows Tim Bradley knows that 10 seconds even hurt, I mean, even in a provider call, if he will do something to keep himself from either being knocked out, like taking a knee, or tying up his opponent. Now everyone said he got hit with that right hand and he backed up. Yeah, he was out on his feet. Bradley may have been out on his feet, but he's smart enough and his body is still up. Two, when Vargas went after him, he threw three, four punches. He missed all of them. Yeah. Go back and look at it. They were either blocked or he just straight up missed. After missing those punches, Tim Bradley tied him up and held him. Right. You can hold him for three, four, maybe five seconds. Referee jumps in. Guess what? Uh, you got to break him up. Break him up. That's another few seconds. Bring him together into the round. Trust me. Bradley, in my opinion, was at no point, in my opinion, not going to make it out that round. Yeah, it was just... 
just hold on for the next few seconds or get on your bike, he was going to win that fight. Or you could do it to provide a call if you could risk it and take a knee. But I'm pretty sure he knew that he was comfortably ahead. Right. So I'm sorry, uh, Vargas landed that punch. He earned that title shot, but you can call it what it will, call it what it is, call it what, what you want. I personally don't think that Bradley was in any danger of getting knocked out. He still had his wits about him to throw a punch back or uh, to avoid punches and tie him up. Yeah. That cost time. He was well within, well, not well within his wits, but he had some wits about him to do that. So, stuff happens. Yeah. Um, they'll probably end up getting a rematch at some point, maybe immediate, maybe after an interim match. And it's going to end up like Lebrado Andrade and Lucian Butte again, where Lucian Butte dominates him once again. I don't think. Well, no, there, he, he there might was, even get a knockout. Yeah, there was no controversy. Up, yeah, he he just completely ended it. Like, like, look, I'm better than you. Get out the ring and demolished him. Uh, Tim Bradley was landing some good shots. Jesse Vargas looked like he was fading himself. Mm -hmm. Maybe Bradley sees that tape, works on his combinations, the things that we were talking about. Like I said, they got good boxing minds. They'll probably see it too. Works on those things and might get the stoppage. Or maybe Jesse Vargas has a full camp with Eric, uh, Eric Morales. Comes out as a giant killer and actually does knock him out. Who knows? That's why you fight the fights. Uh, so we'll be looking forward to seeing that happen. Now, in my opinion... I think Tim Bradley's probably the most dis most deserving of a Mayweather fight than probably any other fight out there, including Amir Khan. Yes, he lost to Pacquiao. Second half of the fight, it was clear win. I think it was even going into the into the sixth, seventh round. That's my opinion. But the fight versus Diego Chavez, I still think Bradley won. I don't know what the refs not the refs the uh, judges were looking at. I know what I saw it was at least eight to four of you asked me. Yeah. Um, Amir Khan, yes, he's beaten his opponents, but you were looking for something better. Running of the mouth really isn't helping. His call, his uh, case, people want to see it. Um, and honestly, between the Algeria fight, that did not that didn't help him at, at all. all. So, but the only problem is, of course, you have Al Heyman. Made with the promotions, and if you want to count Golden Boy, and then Top Rank. Yeah, uh, and you, you know, uh, breaking news, uh, Top Rank is suing Al Heyman. Yes. So that fight's not happening at all. At all. And that it is... <sighs> On top of Golden Boy uh, suing Al Heyman, so no one outside the PPC umbrella is fighting anyone else not inside the PPC umbrella. Matter of fact, we want to hear from you guys. We will, we will talk about this as it materializes. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of the lawsuits of Top Rank and Golden Boy versus PBC? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're well within their rights? Do you think that's just uh, complaining on their parts? Because I have my thoughts. Hakeem has his, but we want to hear from you before we do a video on it. Yeah, hit us up guys. Um, that's it for this video. Uh, hit us up in the comments section below. Make sure you like it. If you have not yet, make sure you subscribe. You can catch us on Facebook, Capital Combat, Google Plus, same name. You can hit us up on our email, capitalcombat at gmail.com. Either one of those ways, we'd love to talk to the fans. We'll hit you back. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's a game. I kick rhyme, hurricane. I told them I don't play. I'm liquid. Black Street Fighter. Street Fighter.